convoy en route to Port Moresby. Troop ships in the Coral Sea with Americans and Australians bound for secret bases in New Guinea. Nearing port, a Hudson bomber of the Royal Australian Air Force escorts them into the harbor. With Japanese less than an hour away by air, troops of the United Nations are pushing out to meet them. Even as they go ashore, the alarm reports enemy bombers on the way. In a few minutes, they're over. Their main target, the transport. but the convoy is safe. Now putting to sea with a U.S. Navy cameraman, we see a new chapter just released of the great American naval victory at Midway, the attack on the carrier Yorktown. Filmed under fire, the battle that cost the Japs 10 warships, four carriers, and nearly 300 planes. Damaged by direct hits, the gallant Yorktown steams on. Her flight deck ablaze, the crew calmly fights the flames as gunners keep up their withering barrage of anti-aircraft fire. Tracer bullets weaving a pattern of hell in the sky. Here comes a Jap torpedo plane. Watch the gunners get him. Midway, greatest sea and air victory in U.S. history. Brazilians expressed their sentiment against the Axis. Angered by the sinking of Brazilian ships, the people of Rio de Janeiro stage a demonstration of bitter protest. Floats exalt the United Nations V for victory. Diplomatic relations with the Axis already severed, Brazil, largest of all South American nations, calls 300,000 reservists to the colors. In a mass induction ceremony, citizens receive their orders, take the soldiers' oath of allegiance. In Central America, Guatemala celebrates Army Day with an impressive display of fighting strength. First to follow the United States in war upon the Axis, this staunch little republic of three and a quarter million people rallies its entire resources to the cause of the United Nations. Decorating Mexico's Foreign Minister Padilla, Guatemala salutes a new ally. Then with U.S. officers as their guests, they see the great flying fortresses that guard the coast. And beneath the shadow of the plains, fresh U.S. troops come to stand by a good neighbor. A stirring spectacle of inter-American friendship Pan Americana is the theme of New York's newest and most colorful skating extravaganza. Stars on ice in Dances of the Tropics. Queen of the Carnival is Argentina's exotic Maita Montes in her own version of the samba. Freddie Trankler, world famous as the funniest man on ice. In tune with the times, the three privates in a drill that speaks for itself.
Today, more than ever before, the study of war begins in the classroom. Here are U.S. Army Air Corps cadets learning to be navigators. Curtain compartments reproduce movements of the plane in flight. The student charts his course with altimeter and compass, learns all the complicated instruments of aerial navigation. Boarding laboratory planes, they go aloft to check book learning with practical experience. Soon they'll be ready to pilot their own ships, lead their own bomber squadrons around the world. America, training a vast army of airmen to keep pace with the biggest aircraft production schedule ever known. America, building an air fleet second to none. Somewhere along the Pacific coast, U.S. Marines tackle the training problem of swimming in the ocean. Many of these young sea soldiers are from inland cities and have never seen an ocean. Launching rubber boats in the surf is all a part of the test. Training that may someday save a man's life or the life of his comrade. <laughs> And they take to it like veteran salts, showing that they're right at home on the ocean or in it. United States troops make their first appearance in India. And like any soldiers 10,000 miles from home, they shop for souvenirs to send back, gather eagerly about the native bazaars, strike up acquaintance with the snake charmer of song and story. Today, India is the last doorway for supplies to China's fighting millions. And in ever-increasing shipments, the supplies are pouring in. American tanks from the great arsenals of Detroit. Tanks by the trainload rolling for fronts wherever they'll do the most good. By camel caravan, guns and ammunition begin the long trek across Tibet, strange blending of east and west. Asia's centuries-old beasts of burden now bearing the traffic of modern war. As natives load giant air transports for the fighting front, British Indian troops, masters of jungle warfare, plunge into the bush, patrolling the Burma border. Guns on the alert, ready for action, contesting the Japanese threat to the front door of India. The border railroad, under constant guard by British troops, while India's rivers are strewn with mines, Punjab sappers rigging ingenious traps, wiring rafts with charges of explosives. Huge herds of cattle are turned from their pastures to make room for more flying fields. Here at a secret air base within the shadow of age-old temples, U.S. pilots instruct Chinese cadets in the art of aerial combat, and they prove apt and willing students. Transports, bombers, and fighters, together winging their way aloft. Blasting the Jap with bomb and shell, they're holding open the Burma Road of the air. <laughs> 